Good morning, everybody. Good morning to my YouTube family that's going to be rewatching this. I want to just welcome you in here to the Word of God today, which is going to be life changing and powerful. So make sure you subscribe, share it out, invite somebody to this because somebody needs this word. And then I want to invite and welcome my TikTok family as y'all are coming in here. Y'all, I'm excited for today's word because today I'm talking about the mountain is you. The mountain is you, baby. And it's time for you to walk in who God has called you to be. It's time for you to walk in the more that the Father has for you. Because our Father has so much more for us, right? But I think a lot of times we settle. We settle for the limp. We settle for the brokenness. We settle for the staying in the traumas and staying stuck and not getting in healing like God really wants for us, right? And so today... As I talk about the mountain is you, I want for you to really begin to look and dive deep into those areas of your life where you're not healed at yet. Those areas in your life where you're faking it to make it or where you're trying to put on this front and put on this 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 act, right? Like as if you good, but you're really not good, right? Or trying to put on this front for everybody and make them think that you're something that you're really not, right? Because one of the things that God has showed me is that, Takaya, as I'm taking you to where I'm taking you to, you got to learn to get so comfortable with you. You got to learn to get confident and comfortable in who God made you to be. And then you got to be okay with knowing that everybody can't go with you. But see, sometimes the everybody who can't go with you is the, a version of you, a version of you that you were or a version that you are still. And maybe the reason why you ain't gotten to where you want to be at is because there's a part of you that's holding you back. Come on. Amen. Come on. So can y'all do me a favor and share this live out today? Y'all, I want to welcome y'all in this live today. It's going to be powerful. We talking about the mountain is you today. Before we get off into the word of God, let's share this out. Go ahead and invite five people into this thing today. Because y'all, I got expectation. You know, I'm expecting today that souls are going to be saved. People are going to be delivered. People are going to be set on fire, right? Somebody said, I can't go with me. Oh, that's crazy good. Come on, that is crazy good. What if it's me, sis? What if it's me that can't go with me? What if it's worrisome me that can't go where God is taking me to? What if it's fearful me? What if it's afraid of other people's opinions me, the people pleasing version of me that can't go where God is taking me to? Come on. Amen. Come on. What, what, what is holding me back? Because I told y'all, you know, like as when I started this journey of influencing, right? When I originally started this journey, it was just about, you know, being the sis you need, right? Being that person for everybody. But you know what? As God has begun to shift me and heal me and grow me, it started becoming about sis, you were made for more. And that's just really been in my spirit, right? That sis, you were made for more. And what's really been in my spirit here recently is just helping people to get to the more. But see, understanding that I was made for more. And I was kind of telling y'all this yesterday about how, you know, I, I was losing followers and how I've had people, you know, just walking away and things like that. And I started to kind of take it a little personal. But the Lord began to show me through a friend of mine who I reached out to for advice. She said, no, sis, this is good. They're not your people. And I'm sitting here, but they were once my people, right? That was once who I was. You know, even today I posted a, a photo on Facebook today of like that old Takaya. And I post this photo of that version of me that I used to be. And I want to try to find a photo of her. I'm trying to find her. Where you at, girl? Where you at? Y'all, let's go to my Facebook real quick. But I post this photo of this old me, right? And as I was looking back at that version of me she said i'm about to ugly cry in this office y'all we got somebody already getting delivered girl go ahead and ugly cry 
This is why you got to, can I just say a little disclaimer? This is why you got to be who God called you to be, right? Because if I wouldn't be who God called me to be, this woman wouldn't be getting delivered. She wouldn't be getting healed like she is right now. And the reason why she's getting healed like she is right now is not because I'm showing up trying to be something I'm not, but because I'm choosing to show up to be who God really made me to be versus the version that people are comfortable with me being. Amen. But I want to show y'all this, this old version of me. I'm looking for a photo right now because I got a point of reference. I'm going with this because I need for y'all to see how God transitions us. Amen. Amen, y'all. My new people, this is a different breed of people. You know, you, you go through different breeds of people, okay? So we're going to kind of go on a little journey of Takaya. Can we go on a little journey of Takaya? The mountain is you. That's what we're talking about today, okay? So we're going to start with her, right? This is high school Takaya. She's a whole model in herself, right? But see, this was living with her mama who's calling her a fat cow. This was homosexual being in domestic violence relationship to Kaya you know she was dating this girl who was a drug dealer who cussed her out put her down made her feel like she wasn't enough and Takaya took it because see Takaya didn't know love and because Takaya didn't know love or understand what it was like to really be loved Takaya was willing to settle for that she was willing to settle for a counterfeit because see, today we're going to talk about them counterfeits today. I want to talk about them counterfeit versions of us too today, okay? So see, this is counterfeit. Hey, Jayra, this is counterfeit. Where I'm in a domestic violence relationship, dating women, looking for love, walking across town, working at Taco Bell, giving her my money so she can flip it for drugs. Come on. Anybody know that life? Know what I'm talking about. But see, she had no self-worth, no self-value. She was taking these pictures because she wanted to feel beautiful because every day she came home to her mama, putting her down, calling her a fat cow, calling her a fat A. And she felt like she was nothing, very suicidal. There's a lot about this girl, man. I'm telling y'all, it was a lot to her, right? See, that was one version of me, right? See, then there was this other version of me who's getting ready to graduate, going into college, right? And she decides she wants to cut her hair. She wants to take a risk because she's trying to find her, right? She's trying to embrace herself. And this version of me right here, see, she was going to, she was, I want to say she may have already had started college and she really wanted to be a cosmetologist because she really loves doing hair, Right. But see, her family told her it was a waste of brain. So because her family told her that being a cosmetologist was a waste of her brain, she chose to go after a degree to try to please people. She thought if she got the accounting degree or the psychology or the sociology degree, then maybe her family would love her. So she was willing to now not only give up her present, but give up her future. Come on. So that way she could be accepted by her family, be loved by her family. But see, can I tell you that this version of me was still in that domestic violence relationship. She was still trying to be loved by this person and she's dating all around, sleeping all around, trying to find love, y'all. Because y'all, yeah, listen, I told y'all my testimony of being sexually abused. It turned me into an addicted to sex. But see, she was still people pleasing. She looks beautiful on the outside, right? But see, on the inside, she was people pleasing. She was broken. She wasn't, didn't feel enough. She's looking for love in all the wrong places, sleeping around with men and women, trying to find some sense of worth. Come on. Trying to get her family to love her. Right? Okay, let's move on. Then there's get married to Gaia, who decided that she was going to give up college, even though she didn't want to be a mom. She wanted so badly to be loved. Right. So and, and let's also talk about this is also the version of Takaya that was very religious, was doing whatever she could to try to appease the pastor in the photo, trying to 
earn his love and earn his favor because he made a commitment he was going to be my father and Takai didn't have no father so she just wanted to be loved so if she had to be at the church early and do whatever she needed to do just to get accepted that's what she did come on she she had to do whatever she had to do because Takaya just wanted love so badly she wanted to be validated so badly and so what she did was is she submitted herself to this leadership that was toxic and narcissistic and controlling and manipulative. And because of submitting herself under that leadership, now she still to this day struggles to embrace the grace of God. Because see, in this leadership, I was taught I had to walk, I had to work for God's love. He didn't just accept me for who I was. He didn't just love me. But see, I had to work for that love. But then at the same time, we also got this version of Takai in the picture and she's pregnant with her first child. And I'm not going to cry because I got to walk this out. OK, it's probably going to be one of the strongest messages I ever preach. This version of Takai was pregnant underneath this dress. And this version of Takai didn't know that later on that night on her wedding day, she was going to lose her first baby. She didn't know when she went to the restroom that night after the biggest day of her life. She was going to lose her first child. I got to speak in tongues and get some strength, y'all. But in this version of me, I was still trying to please my mother. I was still trying to be enough for my mother. And I was still allowing my mom to control and manipulate my whole entire life. Yeah, I was married and Elijah was the head of my, supposed to be the head of my household. But can I be real enough to say that because I struggle with manipulation, with my being manipulated and people pleasing and narcissistic mother so badly. That even though he was my head, my mama was still controlling my life. Man, there's so many facets in this photo I could just tell you about, man. Let's go to another version of Takaya. Come on. I'm on a journey. Then we got this version of Takaya who just had Addison, my rainbow baby. After I just had, you know, she's still people pleasing. She's thinking that if she has the baby, she's going to be enough in her marriage. But in this time, she kind of found out she really wasn't. She's smiling on the photo, but she's still struggling with postpartum depression. And she's trying so hard to just show up every single day. And she got this beautiful baby in her arms. And she's so grateful to God for the baby, but she's still a people pleaser. She's still overweight. She still doesn't feel like she's enough. And she's now trying to become something and be whatever she needs to be to again get love. Come on. Let's keep going, y'all. Mm. Let's do this version. Then we got this version of Takaya, stay at home mom. You know, when you're a stay-at-home mom, your worth and identity tends to be tied to your children or it tends to be tied to what you do in your house. So in this version of me, my self-worth was connected to my kids, cleaning the house, being perfect. But so many times that kept failing me and I was depressed because I was in this house all day with three little babies and... I'm stressed. I have no self-worth, no me, and I'm doing whatever I can to find a glimpse of me. So I go and get my hair cut because I just wanted to feel beautiful. Because every time I look in the mirror, all I see is my mom body. All I see is that woman who's overweight. And I just wanted to feel beautiful, even if it was for a moment. 
Then we got her, right? Who who finally decides that she gonna be her whole self, right? And and she gonna stop trying to fit into that mold of what a mother looks like. And she's gonna go get her hair cut in a way that is gonna make her feel bold because she wants to feel bold. She wants to feel like she's being herself again. She's trying to find out who Takaya is all over again in the midst of the mom and everything, right? She's like doing it, right? And then we got her though, y'all. We got her who makes a decision to take her health back. So she made a decision and she's gonna go to Tijuana, Mexico and she's gonna go and get gastric sleeve surgery and she's taking her health back she's taking her life back she's gonna wear her hair how she wants to she's gonna be funky she's gonna be crazy she's breaking social norms she's breaking christian norms she don't care about religion no more because she kind of is learning that god loves her right either way it goes and now all of a sudden she starts breaking free from the weight and when she starts losing the weight she realized that the weight is kind of connected to a little bit more than what she thought it was right then we got this version of me, the ordained pastor who starts a ministry out of her house, our first Mother's Day, and she's doing this thing, giving up her life for God, pursuing ministry, not even knowing that people who were her closest friends are getting ready to hurt her, do her wrong, and walk away from her and all that kind of stuff right and and she doesn't even know that she's getting ready to face one of the most difficult things in her life because she's coming upon the place where she about to lose her mama Whew. it's a journey y'all tell y'all it's a journey then we got this takaya who loves red she's owning it she's funky got her own style she says, God, if I'm going to be a pastor, I got to be who I got to be. I'm not going to try to be the, 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 the first lady who wears the long dresses. Now, -uh. if I'm going to be a first lady, I'm showing up in combat boots, blinged out hat, red jacket. I'm being everything God called me to be because God called me to be the pastor that he called me to be and not the one that everybody thinks I should look like. Come on. And then we got this photo, which was the last day of us having service in our home. The day we made one of the biggest decisions to walk away from having in-person services because I had just been betrayed and lied on, gone through another church split. I was tired of serving people. I was tired of pouring into people. I'm tired of lifting up people because all they're going to do is do you wrong anyways. And that day we made a decision to walk away from Heritage of Faith Family Worship Center, which was our first ministry, and walk away from Heritage of Faith Family Worship Center and become associate pastors in Waco. That instead of us trying to push this vision God gave us, we're pushing somebody else's vision. Mm. Let's do her. I like her. Then we got this version of Takaya. Y'all on this journey with me yet? We got this version of Takaya who is stepping back into the coaching again, the coaching side of her. Realizing that, yeah, praise God, I'm called to be a minister, but I'm also called to be a businesswoman too. That I have this innate desire to coach people to success and help people to be wealthy. And so I'm rebranding and I'm going to start making flyers and I'm doing this thing. I'm going to start coaching people again and I'm going to help women to gain confidence and their mindset and be who God has called me to be. So I'm going back to school at this point. You know, I'm still a mom and all this stuff, but you know, like y'all see, she didn't lost the weight like she knew lost it girl but I'm making a decision to get back into my business bag but but can I be real when I decided to get back into my business bag I decided to forsake the ministry side of me because I didn't want to be a minister no more I got bills to pay I'm called to be wealthy I want to make money God and I want to do something that's going to allow me to be all of me 
I don't want to be no minister because a minister, I got to dress a certain way, talk a certain way, be a certain way. People betray you, do you wrong. And I wanted to be in, in, in a different place, right? Because can I be real enough to say that like, I know I'm called to be wealthy. I know I'm called to be a billionaire and broke don't agree with my spirit. And so I decided that, you know what? I'm going to embrace all of me. So I made a decision that I was going to put my profile photo of me test driving this G-Wagon because I wanted only the people in my circle who I could be myself with. So if Takaya driving a G-Wagon offended you, I wanted you to be offended. I wanted you to be so rubbed the wrong way because I was tired of trying to fit in. That you know what, if, me have, if, if I got to be broke to pastor you, I don't want you in my congregation, baby. Then if I got to sit over here and drive putt putt for you to love me, you got to go. Why? Because I got one life to live and I'm not about to live my life miserable so you can be happy. So I post this photo of me and my G wisdom, right? Then we got her. Oh, baby, she fearless. She going after her dreams. She realized who she called to be. She started making moves. She started doing photo shoots. She started to do so. Why? Because she know God about to do something big in her life. And because God finna do something big in her life, she got to get ready for that bigger. She got to start shifting how she dresses. And she's shifting how she's showing up. Why? Because God is shifting something in her life, right? Y'all, this was April of last year. Come on, this was April of last year. Then we got this boss who's influential now. This was um, September 26th of last year. She's influential now. Brands are seeking her out. She got this huge following. She just, she overcame betrayal from the church. And man, she loves herself. She embracing herself. She, she wearing that Christian Dior bag. It's a dupe. But she wearing it. Why? Because she don't care. Because she embrace herself. She knows God has called her to wealth. So her people, they going to find her, right? And she knows that she already done found her tribe who allow her to be herself. And she ain't got to try to fit in. So then she takes it a step further. She's starting to show a little tongue. Why? Because she's learning to love her body. She's learning to not care about what anybody think about her body no more that you know what baby this this this, this fupa carry three kids this this saggy belly i love it why because it reminds me that when the doctor said i wasn't gonna be able to have babies babe we did that we ain't done can i tell y'all we ain't done with this journey yet can i tell y'all we, we we still on the journey where we at in this journey Mm. And then we got her. This is this is me. Amen. Then we got her. Who's making a decision to walk away. Walk away from everybody who uses her. Takes advantage of her. They only want a relationship with her when she's given to them. But the moment that she wants something in return, they got a problem with that. This is this is me walking away from from people pleasing, walking away from relationships where I got to save you, where you need me. And I'm walking away so I can embrace who God has made me to be. And this is just me looking like a whole snack plus dinner, baby. Okay, listen, I just had to show that photo because I shouldn't be giving looks like that. Amen. Because listen, I serve God and I can I, I give looks. Okay. And then this is me today. Y'all see this journey? Now, why do I say this is me today? Because today, where I'm at is I'm at a place where. I'm having to make a decision to either be who people are comfortable with me being or be who God has really called me to be. There's a difference. I'm having to make a decision to 
embrace everything I am or embrace what people think I am. And as I told y'all, as I've been on this journey, this word has been in my spirit. Sis, you were made for more. And see, when I was saying this, I thought this was for everybody else until I sat at my kitchen table yesterday and I looked at my husband and I said, baby, what if sis you were made for more is for Takaya? What if God, and y'all know me, I use my testimony to help somebody, right? I was asking, hey, mama, come here. Yo, y'all gotta see my mama, one of my mama. Y'all know I got two, come around here. Hey, what brings you by? Come and buy the You come by the shop? Yeah. Got them good testimonies. Oh, you got testimonies? Tell them. Come on, y'all, come here, mama. Uh -huh. Come on. I don't care. I'm not worried about that. Either you're going to trust the process. Something I need to tell you, though. Okay, you good. Not for everybody, though. Okay, well, not for everybody. Y'all, look at her. Mama, how old are you? Got my shirt on. Y'all see her got on her prayers apart, including my best man? Bye, bye. See, I got to tell y'all about this lady, okay? And stuff, because y'all know me. I'm always out. It's funny because I was telling my testimony. Oh. And it's funny that you walked in today. And I'm going to tell y'all why it's funny, because she's a part of this testimony. Whenever, so she has known me since I was born. Right. Um, she's known me since I was, you know, when I be at my grandma's house, she lived across the street, right? This is Mama Sherry, and then there's Mama Cheryl. Their names are very similar. <laughs> and when I was a little girl, many of y'all know my testimony about how I had an aunt, right, who struggled with schizophrenia. And she would chase us around with knives. <laughs> and I always say this woman saved my life because one of the days when she was chasing us is when she had to make a decision to make the call to the police. Yeah. Yeah. So that way me and Nequa well, y'all get the point of what was about to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And stuff. And it's crazy how, you know, me, because her daughter's Mia, and me, Mia, and Tammy, we had us like a whole singing group going on. We was all super close as kids and stuff. And <laughs> you couldn't tell us nothing, right? We'd be on the bus singing together. And then, you know, as I got into um, adulthood, like I was doing hair. And life is so full circle because I would I do I would do her hair and y'all yeah. yeah, could do the baddest blowout in the world, mm -hmm. right? I straighten her hair That's and good. she would always come to me and straighten my hair. I mean let me straighten her hair. And this is when I was living in my other house, the rat infested house I'll tell y'all about. And when I would live there, she would come and she would always tell me, you know, like you gonna be this, you gonna do that, <laughs> right? And you know, at the time when you're broke, when you're struggling, when you're living in this house and she, every time she comes, she got these bags, these Louis bags and she driving her Mercedes, you drive Mercedes, right mama? She's driving her Mercedes and you know, I'm like, I am going to do this. Like I wanted the life because I've always loved luxurious things. I just couldn't afford luxurious things. And so she would always, you know, like come with these things and I would see her whip out like the biggest iPad you ever did see in the world and stuff. And as she would whip out this iPad, I was like, man, you know, it was giving me hope, y'all, okay? And she was giving me an image of what life could look like and could be like, that I could be successful. I could have a nice house. I, I could do all these things. And so she would, you know, just give me this example. She would always believe in me. That even though I was in that house and I was struggling financially and like struggling, I mean, I was doing how much was I? I would make about thirty dollars, right, yes. for for press press yes. and stuff. Yes, yes. And and she would always tip me. She would <laughs> always tip me, y'all. That's why I like it. <laughs> but she always tip me. And y'all don't understand, like when you broke, okay, them tips be everything. Yes. And so she would always believe in me. And then fast forward, you know, now I get my, I get the dream house that I would always say I was going to get. And she was like, I always knew you was going to get this house. And she actually threw my housewarming party for me. And, you know, then after that, I started coaching again. And it was because of her, I was getting clients because I was charging $50 for sessions. Right. And I wouldn't get nobody. But when she came, all of a sudden, all these people, because everybody follow mama, they all, y'all do, okay, y'all do. So now, like, they come in and stuff like that, and I'm getting to coach people, and I'm coaching her team, because, so mama is in paparazzi, and she is successful in paparazzi, like, y'all know where some people just do it online, nuh-uh, mama got brick and mortar. 
okay? And and mama had one building, God gave her a bigger building, and she's gonna get a bigger building. And so because she ain't even got enough space for what she got, okay? And so but so, like she would just, you know, send her paparazzi team to me. If she wanted to get them on a live, she'd send them to me. And so now I'm over here, you know, doing these coaching sessions, $50. Now y'all know I don't do that no more, so I don't think we're running that back. But I'm doing this. Now, mind you, I'm not really influential at the time, but we're getting somewhere. Then I host my first event, Elevate Her and stuff. And man, because of her, I was able to get ticket sales and stuff. And that's when I was doing events and ticket sales will be like, I tried charging 97 but they were paying like $25, $50. And stuff like we were just proud of themselves. Now, praise God, I got people who pay three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars to come to my events. But Amen. where I was, where I am, and so you know, I'm getting all that and stuff. And then now, getting to even coach her. Now, I want you to imagine, I'm getting to coach the one <laughs> I looked up to. I like she gave me hope. She to me saved my life. And so getting to now start, I was getting to coach her. And then now, well, I don't really coach. She just will call me if she needs something. <laughs> or she'll just come She's by, right? <laughs> she is fake. And, and honestly, I feel like after, ever since you got the oil of increase, you don't call me no hey, more. Hey, hey, I just, you told me what to do. What to pray. That just dawned on me. What to pray. Call on him. Like she Sometimes got, you say you got to pray for yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to pray for yourself. Y'all, ever since she got the oil of increase, she she has abandoned me. I'm here though. It's but okay. I'm here now. But I'm here now. Because <laughs> I mean, the testimony. So, yeah. you know, in all this, you know, like she has just that, that, that growth, right? And now, like being in the place where, you know, God has blessed me with influence and God has mm -hmm. allowed me to be successful, you know, and getting to see yes. you be successful as well and stuff. And just getting to see how, you know, the seasons change and how it's so important that you have those people in your life who believe in you when you ain't got the confidence yes. to believe in yourself. Oh, that's right. When I tell you the times when I didn't believe in myself, but she would remind me. When I would go through them seasons and I want to quit and give up, she'd say, y'all just give Skya time. She'll be back. That's right. Now, if I start getting out of whack a little mm -hmm. too much, then she'll put her foot in. <laughs> you know, but if for the most part, I stay on a good path. We good. But I say all this to say that you got to be surrounded. If you are going higher, mm -hmm. you got to be surrounded by higher. Do not ever underestimate the power of connections and relationships. And a lot of times we want to connect down. You want to connect to people who haven't gone to where you're trying to go. You want to use and you use the people who who haven't gone where you're trying to go to, to be a voice or a noise in your life. Right. Remember, it's all noise unless you got the results I want. And I had to be willing to look at what was going on. I was looking, I'm going to tell y'all like straight up, I looked at her life. I, oh, I analyzed that book book because I wanted to know what is she doing that I'm not doing. Right down to the waffle line. No, pancake. It was the, oh, the uh, griddle. The griddle. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, y'all. When I got my first griddle, like I was so excited because I remember like my granny didn't have no griddle. My mama didn't have no griddle. And so like when I went to her house, one day she was cooking on a griddle and I thought that was like the wealthiest thing. Like wealthy people cook with griddles. <laughs> now I'm like, <laughs> you know, like yeah. wealthy people got chefs yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But back then that was wealth to me. So when I got my first griddle, I was so excited and so proud because you gave me that image. I didn't and had no idea that you were watching me. So people are watching. You. And that too, people, you don't know who's watching you. You don't know who's watching your success journey. You don't know who's watching. You know what I mean? Like you could be very well be the very one giving somebody hope and you don't even realize it. No, You're giving somebody that image. You know, the Bible says we got to get a new ideal. That is getting an image. You got to get that image of success. Like I was listening to another person like talking about on their glow up journey because that's really been my, my season. I'm on a glow up journey and that's really been just like near to my heart. And so they were saying you got to listen to like podcasts that are helping you in your glow up journey. 
So what I did is I started literally like, you know, and they talk about that. You got to get that image. You got to get that vision. What does success look like for you? How do you dress? How do you talk? How do you maneuver, right? And listen, somebody said, hey, sis, I've got my oil and been since last month is telling high delivery is sell is selling high delivery volume. Is it telling or are selling high delivery volume? Well, either way, go. praise yes, God. Right? Come on. Y'all know I use that oil of increase. I put mine on. I put that book on that iPad, um, that MacBook, oh my and God. lay hands. Mm -hmm. I've been using my other oil. Your deep around? Mm -hmm. See, that's what I've been, I've been using, using too. I I've use my deep around today. This whole month been deep around. The whole month. I feel like some months, you know what I mean? Like, Just, oh. I put it on. I haven't gotten it yet. I've gotten, I have gotten my own I haven't gotten it yet, probably. Email me. I'm not understanding what you're saying. So email me a bougie. Um, my assistant, will you put that in the chat for them, okay? Oh, I hired an assistant. Oh, I, I heard you say that yesterday. Good. Bougie. Good. Good. That makes you feel a little something. <laughs> but, you know, having that, that, that image, that vision, of who God is calling you to be and having people that are around you are speaking into your life that is in agreement with that because a lot of times we're holding on to and I was going to talk today about like the um, counterfeit versions right and today I was talking about how the mountain is you and somebody says something they said it's me that can't go with me mm. it's who I am now that can't go with where God has taken me. Wow. And as I was even sitting there journaling today, I was journaling about that people pleasing version of me. And I realized like where God has taken me, I literally, I, I cannot afford to worry about what other people think. Okay. Because, I, and one of the things God was just been showing me about like Moses, what was Moses issue? He allowed the followers to lead him. I didn't call your followers to lead you. I called you to lead them. I didn't call Amen. your downline to lead you. <laughs> Amen. I call you to lead them. Amen. And a lot of times we're getting advice and leadership and things like that from the wrong people or in the wrong places. And so full circle and all this together, understand that God has called you for greater. But as God has called you for greater, you got to position yourself around people, around environments and atmospheres. Because can I tell you that there are some environments that you just can't grow in? Remember when Jesus said, get all the doubters out of the room. Oh, mama, I, I, you've done what you did. Can you sit Thank right there you. now? Thank you. you you're going to have to get a front row today. You see her with her prayers including my, you know we sold out of that shirt. Oh, I love this shirt. Y'all mama get a front row to this message today. <laughs> but you got to get around people who are pushing you towards that greatness. But you got to get God first. Because one of like, I have, I've told y'all about my mentorship student. I have one mentorship student. When she came into this thing, she was a five figure earner. Now she just got literally a six figure contract. And I sat there, we went around, and you know what she told everybody? She said, you want to know what I equate my success to? Putting God first. I put God first. And as I put God first, it's like the deals, the contracts, the things. It's like it's just all coming together. Why? Because I put God first. When I start understanding that I was created for more, I got to get to the back to the creator. I got to get back to God. What? Money. You just made money? Always with you. Say it out Mama said she just made money. She said every time she's with me, she makes money. Five minutes ago. See? She just made... Come on. Oh, every Is that time? Eli? Is that somebody Eli? Okay. Make sure it's Eli. It is. Okay. But as I was like, like I told y'all, just dissecting this story about like when Jesus had saw that fig tree, right? When he saw the fig tree, on the outside, the fig tree looked like it was good. But when he got closer, it looked like it, you could eat from this tree. But as he got closer, he started to realize that, yeah, it looked good on the outside, but that's not really what's going on here. Isn't there some of us right now where 
on the outside, we may like we got it all together, but on the inside, there's still some things that we need to heal, that we need to let God work on, let God maneuver and deal with in our lives. And there's still some places or things that we're holding on to that are a counterfeit version of what God really wants to do in our life. That it's a, And like I said, there are some environments you can't grow in. There are some trees, certain plants that flourish in other seasons. But not in every season. Some seasons, like think about it right now, like my trees. If you look at my trees outside, they look dead. Because right now, based off of the season, that's what it looks like. It's not dead, but it looks dead. But can I tell you, if you come back in spring, my season, my, my trees look so alive. I mean, they flourish and they beautiful. What happened? The season changed. Can I, can I prophesy over somebody today that God is shifting your season? Can I prophesy over somebody today that God is doing an internal work? That he's healing something on the inside of you. Because as God heals you internally, your external is going to have to come into agreement with it. That is God teaches me wisdom. Think about it. Have y'all ever seen them posts where it say, Solomon asked for wisdom and discernment. Look at everything God gave him. He asked for something that would shift him internally. And because of it, God shifted him also externally. What if the prayer you need to pray is God shift me internally so I can get the external result I'm praying for? What do I need to change on the inside of me so I can see the shift on the outside of me? What if I need to pray, Lord, break off the people pleasing on the inside of me so I can live the life that I'm desiring to live? That the person who doesn't people please lives. Because the people pleaser me. Struggles. Lives month to month. Paycheck to paycheck. Because she don't want nobody to judge her. She has to be. I'm poor. I'm poor. Don't, no you don't judge me. I'm humble. See the people pleasing version of me. Still believes that poverty means humility. But see, the version of me that doesn't people please anymore, she knows that, that, that humility has nothing to do with what is or is not in your bank account. But humility has everything to do with, do I put my trust in what's in the bank account or do I put my trust in the God who's feeling it? You know, I read a scripture earlier in my quiet time that was so good. And it's Proverbs chapter 11, verse 28. And it says, he who leans on and trusted and is confident his riches will fall. Basically, put your money, put your trust in that bank account if you want to, baby, and watch and see it fail you. Put your trust in your money if you want to and watch and see it fail you every single time. But listen, it says, but the righteous who trust in God's provision. Do you know we are righteous in right standing with God when we trust in his provision? We are in right standing with God when we trust in him doing it and not in us doing it. And it says the one who puts their trust, you got your oil, praise God, y'all. Go get y'all oil of increase today. Go get y'all's deeper realms anointing oils. I'm telling y'all the testimony we've seen with them anointing oils, go grab yours today. Don't hesitate. Go get it and use code welcome back and get 20% off. She said, oh boy, oh boy. Does it smell delicious? It smells amazing. Y'all use code welcome back and get 20% off on whatever you get in our boutique today. No matter how much you spend. Go ahead and get that discount today. Go shop with us today at thesisyouneed.co or click the link in the bio, y'all. It says, but the righteous who trust in God's provision will flourish like a green leaf. You want to flourish? You want to tap into the more? God has, has allotted for you, you got to start trusting in his provision. And I'm not even just talking about money. I'm talking about trusting his 
validation he's already given you. Trust in his acceptance he's already given you. Trust in who he called and created you to be. Trust in knowing that if God gave you that word, if God spoke this over your life, he's faithful to complete it. Trust and know that, listen, if, if you seek him first, he's going to add all the things. That you're blessed to be a blessing. I was sitting there just thinking about like some of these scriptures I was coming across in Proverbs chapter um, 11, verse 14. In the abundance of wise, godly counselors, there's victory. If you ain't got no wise, godly counselors in your life, how you going to be victorious? You have got to put things in your ear that are helping you to grow and grow up, glow up. We go from faith to faith, glory to glory. You got to be listening to people that are in alignment and agreement with who God has called you. That's why I tell people, if you want to live paycheck to paycheck, I ain't going to probably be the person for you. If you don't believe in women preaching, I'm not the person for you. If you looking for a perfect pastor, a perfect minister, I'm a failure. If you looking for somebody who going to who going to water themselves down and dress what you think looks the part, I ain't the person for you. As a matter of fact, if you looking for somebody that that you can control and manipulate and think that you can sow into their ministry and that's that's your ticket to tell them what to do, I definitely ain't the person for you. Keep it. Why? Because I am called to freedom. And, and can I tell everybody here? Never let the people or the thing God has called you to, to be the thing that gets you in bondage. Never let the people and the thing that God has called you to, to get you in bondage. Come on. Listen to this scripture. It says, the merciful and generous man benefits his soul. When you are merciful and generous, you benefit your soul. It says, for his behavior returns to bless him. Mercy and generosity will create a return of blessing in your life. Are you somebody that's only about self? Or are you somebody who's about lifting other people up? I tell all my business owners who I coach, before you get so caught up in the sales, you got to add value to your audience. You got to establish yourself as an expert to your audience. Then I, then I read another scripture. Listen to this. In verse 26 of, of Proverbs 11. The people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it. But a blessing from God and man is upon the head who sells it. I said, that's a business scripture. There is a blessing from God and man when you sell that thing. When, when Notice what it says. The grain that the public needs. I, I will end right there. The grain that the public needs. But there's a blessing when he sells that grain. Not only is there a blessing from God when he sells the grain. But there's a blessing from the people as well. What is God saying? God is saying, don't hold back your gift. Don't hold back that business idea, that service, that product. You want to be a millionaire. You want to be wealthy. Service or product. Value for value. You give value, you give value back. And there's a blessing. A lot of you, even right now, I want to talk to my business owners and I want to talk to my, but I want to talk to my Christian business owners because a lot of you feel bad for charging people. Can I tell you something? They are going to go to Louis Vuitton and pay them. Gladly let them pay you. 
Because can I tell you something? If you will go and spend your money with Louis Vuitton, why does your Christian brothers or sisters have to give you a discount in the first place? I'm not above a discount. I'm not. I do them in my business all the time. But I am. A, but I do got an issue with entitlement in Christianity. That because I'm a Christian and, I, and I'm coaching you, I should have to do it for free? Are you serious? Are you really serious? Because don't the Bible say we are to do good, especially to those of the household of faith? So, so if I'm doing good, especially to those of the household of faith, then if I will pay somebody who's not of the household of faith full price, then it should be very much easier to pay somebody of the household of faith full price. Why? Because God told me I'm supposed to do even more for them. You should be going even above and beyond for them. You don't water it down. That's entitlement. That's manipulation. And I won't even kind of say it's a little witchcrafty for me. No, you should be going above and beyond for them. Because us being in the household of faith, I tell like I literally I tell God, I want to be an example of who our father is, right? I want to represent who God is in my finances. I haven't always gotten it right. When I first like got wealthy, let me make it very clear. I blew it. I blew it. I didn't know how to handle money. Now I'm having to learn how to handle money. I've told y'all that several times, but I didn't know how to. And I wasn't always wise with what God has given me, but I've had to learn it. One of the things I do is I like to go and support other business owners. And so especially like Christian business owners, black business owners. I love to go support different business owners in different array of ways. Because it, what it's doing is, if you're generous, your behavior will create a blessing for you. Some blessings can only be unlocked when you give. You know, it says do good to those of the household of faith, right? Why is it that we believe that somebody should add value to us, but we don't think we should add value to them? Oh, because you're good. You should give. You should just give me coach. I'm just using coaching example. You should give me a coach session for free. So it's okay for me to give you value, but it's not okay for you to give me value. And a lot of times we have this bad, toxic relationship. And I know so many people who say Christians are the worst to do business with for that reason. Because a lot of times we are entitled. The mountain is you. It's still us. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not shifting my topic yet. I'm still on it. Just flow with me for a little bit. I want to be an example of who my father is. Our father is generous, right? He is loving. He is kind. He is merciful. And our father is the best businessman out there. Our father is successful. Our father is prosperous. Not to say we're not going to go through things. Jesus went through things. But it's what he did and when he went through it. What if in this, what if in, in your life, you made a decision that physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, I'm going to be an example of who God is. And I'm going to really take inventory and ask myself, have I been an example to God in finances? Okay, if God is a giver, why ain't I a giver? If God is generous, why am I not generous? God is merciful. I had to literally... Yesterday, I had to get on the phone and, for, and I had to make a decision to forgive somebody who hurt me, betrayed me, broke me. But you know what I did? I got on that phone and I blessed them like crazy. Told them how proud of them I was. You don't think I was? I was hurt in that relationship, but you know what I had to do? I had to do it because it was for me. Come on, it was something that was doing in me. I want y'all to really think about these things as we talk about this mountain being cast into the sea. This is kind of part one. We're going to talk about it in depth some more tomorrow. But that mountain being cast into the sea. He says, if you don't doubt in your heart, it will move. You're asking things to move. But see, God says it's not moving because your heart posture is not right. So because you're not right here, I can't move things there. Because you're not at 
at that place, you're not ready to receive what you're praying for. So you know what happens when I'm not ready to receive what I'm praying for? I got to stay in process season. Remember what he said? He said, the one with the grain who withholds it from the people who need it. It says the people are going to be mad. But the one who sells it, oh, blessing from God and God is not asking us to just give everything away for free. I'm not saying there's not times when God calls us to sow seeds, right? Or, or to like give it away free. But can I tell you that there's a blessing in charging? Because what it's doing is it's not only creating value to you, but it's creating value to them. And it's also allowing us to be able to prosper and fund and do what God is wanting for us to do. But even taking it a step further, man, if you got a gift, you got a talent, sis, you were made for more. I was made for more. You're more than just a minister. You're more than just a prophetess. But can I say, you're just, you're more than just a business owner. And even me as a business owner, I'm a content creator. I own my own boutique, but I also do coaching, but I also do mentorships. I also help Christian entrepreneurs make six, five to six figures. I also write books. Come on, I also make money from Amazon, Facebook and IG, deposit checks, and everything I'm doing. I'm not just only just the sis who gets on here and preaches a message that makes people feel good or prophesy over their life. No, God has called me to be a sis. There's a grace for business and a grace for wealth over my life. But even besides that, I'm also a mom to three beautiful children, a nine-year-old, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old. I'm a 29-year-old entrepreneur. I'm a wife to my husband of 10 years. I'm a motivator. I'm an encourager. I'm a prophetess. Sometimes I'm a pastor. Some days I'm just sis. Some days I may be your auntie, your bestie, your homegirl. I'm so many facets. And what I believe that God is moving us into at as like a ministry, as the sis you need, as like my audience and my following, I believe God is moving us into more. Will we stop showing up and just a great friend? Amen. Will we not just show up in the versions of us that people are comfortable with? But what if God is moving us to show up as a version of us that even people aren't comfortable with? Because how can you find your true tribe being something you're not? You're praying to God for relationships and God is like, be yourself. So I want to pray over y'all. We're going to do, we're going to do um, our tithes and offerings. So go ahead, start purposing your heart, what you're going to give, what the Lord is leading you to give today. We're a giving ministry, sowing ministry. And I want to pray over y'all today. Father God, I just want to lift up everybody here today, Father God. I pray that they would know that they were made for so much more. They were made for more than they could ever ask and dream or even imagine. That God, they were made to be more than just that stay at home mom or more than just that business owner or more than just that minister. But God, help them to see it. God, so many times it's so easy to allow what we see externally to give us our self-worth internally. But I pray today, God, that we would be like what you said in Proverbs. And if we trust in God's provision, you, God, are going to give us, we're going to flourish. God, today we choose to trust in your provision so we can flourish. We choose to trust that you gave us everything that we need to be great. So this talkative mouth we got, it's going to help us be great. That painful past, it's still going to help us be great. Why? Because you take what the enemy means for evil and turn it for our good. That business idea, go help us be great. Those gifts and talents you gave us, God, are going to help us be great. Because, God, you have given us everything we need to be successful. And we know and believe and receive the success you have for us, God. 
I know you have called me to people who are called to be successful, who are called to be wealthy, who are called to be fruitful and multiply. I know, God, you have called me to be a leader and a pioneer and a trailblazer for women, women who have a background, women who struggle with people pleasing and rejection and so many other things, Father God. Help me to steward that well. Thank you, Lord, for each and every each and every soul, each and every follower, each and every person you put in my life, God, that I can pour into, Father God, that I can help to become the more. But God, if our season is ending, I thank you for the season we had together. In Jesus' name, amen. If y'all would like to give your life to Jesus give and receive the life that Jesus has for you, I want to lead you to the Lord. Just pray after me. Say, Father God, I ask that you would forgive me for everything that I have done displeasing to you. Jesus, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. And I invite you in today to make your home in me. To reside on the inside of me. And to give me a new life. In Jesus name. Amen. If you just if you just gave your life to Christ, put it in the chat. Let us know. We want to know who gave their life to the Lord today. Put it in the chat. And y'all, we're going to go into a time of giving. Takai Revelo Ministries is a nonprofit organization, so we want to thank y'all for giving and sowing today. We have different ways that you can sow. You can sow by Cash App, which is which is also the same. You can also sew by Venmo, PayPal, and Zelle. And we also, we no longer have Apple Pay available in the bio because I accidentally deleted it. On accident, I deleted it. And I do have a few announcements for y'all today. So make sure y'all stick around after the giving um, so I could give y'all the announcements because we have something amazing coming in 2024. Um, we're going to be launching something really big, something y'all have all been asking for. And so I want to prepare y'all for this, get y'all ready for this. And so as y'all give today, give generously with a heart of generosity. Give cheerfully with a heart of cheerfulness and allow God to lead you in your giving today. I want to come to Kenya soon. God bless you too, prophetess. How are y'all doing today? Y'all, I, I, I hear y'all call me pastor and I'm like, mm -hmm. I would go by apostle or prophetess. I'm not really, there's a version there. Definitely a version there. Yeah, but I want I want to go to Kenya one day. I do want to go to Kenya. I want to go to so many places, you know, and take the gospel there and just, you know, bring what the Lord has done here back down there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I want to pray over everybody's finances today, Father God. God, I pray that you would give us wisdom on how to steward and manage our finances well. Your word says, Father God, that he who mismanages his home will end with nothing. Help us, Father God, to have the wisdom that we need so we can manage our home so we don't end up with nothing. Help us, Father God, to steward our resources better, Father God. The resources that you have blessed us with, Father God. I pray a blessing over their finances today. I pray that you would increase us, Father God. And God, I pray that you would show us how to multiply what you have already given into our hands, Father. Father, we thank you, God, that you are good, that you are faithful, that you are kind, and that you take care of us, Father God, and that you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus as we give today, Father God. Father, I thank you for 
every person who partners with Takaya Revelo Ministries. I pray, Father God, for a harvest and a return of blessing in their life. May you overflow them. May they abound, God, with for every good work, Father God. Father, I thank you today, God that eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man all that you have made ready and keep available for us father god because god we know lord that your word says you shall give us a surplus of prosperity that means after every need has been met even there is more than enough left over so i decree and declare that we shall have a surplus of prosperity that even after we paid all of our bills and we tithed and we gave and we've done our investments god there's still more than enough left over father god I thank you for raises and bonuses, for promotions, Father God. And I pray today that you would break off poverty and lack in this ministry, God, that every person that has been struggling with this, God, I thank you right now that you are breaking them free from it. Give them the wisdom and the discernment and the principles and tools that is needed to break it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. You know, I really... I believe that coming soon, I'm not going to set a date on this, but I do say coming soon, I'm going to do a teaching on breaking free from poverty because breaking free from poverty is rooted in principles. It's rooted in principles. There are certain principles that when you work those principles, it'll break you out of it. Amen. But y'all, I want to make this announcement that I'm just so excited about. And y'all have probably um, have seen it maybe, I don't know. But so a few changes that are kind of happening right now. We are revamping the podcast. And so the podcast is now called Sis you were made for more and so as i started my podcast it was a sis you need podcast now it's sis you were made for more hosted by the sis you need and so we're going to start putting out more podcasts and stuff so i'm really really excited about that you know just being able to pour into people's lives and encourage y'all and just bringing that so we're going to start doing it weekly and so that's a new thing that's coming so y'all can listen to me while you're on the gym because y'all know i go to the gym faithfully and i'm so going to challenge y'all to get in the gym get on this glow up journey get on this becoming the best version of who god created you to be journey y'all because it is so vital oh thank y'all thank y'all for getting y'all's anointing oils go grab y'all's anointing oils today at the sis you need.co they're so life-changing and like i say the testimonies from the anointing oils are just so beautiful and a testament of the goodness of god um, also, another thing that we will be launching in January is the Sis You Were Made For More community. We're going to be launching a community where you can get mentorship. Um, you're going to be able to just get so much out of this. So we're going to have our own private Facebook group. You're going to get one weekly call. So three of those weeks, we're going to just do like something on transformation. So when you come, I may be teaching on mindset. I may be talking about wealth. I may be talking about getting closer to God. It's going to be a little bit of everything. And then once a month, we're going to do a business one. So once a month, I'm going to do like a call teaching all about business and stuff. And so this is going to be really amazing. So if you're looking for a community, where you can grow in, that you can be transformed in, that you can level up in. And we're going to be, um, my prayer team is going to be in there. So you'll be getting that prayer as well. Um, we're also, whenever you insist you are made for more community, you get discounts at my boutique. So whenever you shop at my boutique, you're going to get exclusive discounts and stuff. You're going to get encouragement and different devotionals and stuff. It's going to be $55 a month. That is the investment. And no it's not going to be free. No, I'm not offering discounts. I've had people ask in the past, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all now that ahead of time, okay? Yeah, it's going to be $55 a month, though. And this is going to be really just so transformative. You're going to grow. You're going to learn. You're going to be able to really just get closer to God spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. We're going to be talking about our health in here too because y'all know your girl go to the gym. And so I just want to be able to help y'all to discover your identity, your purpose, knowing who God has called you to be. So this is coming in January. So I want y'all to go ahead and get ready to make that, that $55 investment. This is $55 that you're investing into yourself. What is that? Less than $2 a day, right? That's less than $2 a day. Yeah, you got $2 a day. And so, yeah, it's going to be so good, y'all. So y'all be looking out for that. It's going to be in 2024. We're going to be doing mentoring, growing community, weekly Zoom calls, growing in your life and your mindset. We're going to grow in our mental health. You're going to have that support group, that support system. 
and just knowing you were made for more, knowing that God has called you to greater and just being able to be around other people that's on that same journey, same path. Yes, it's a monthly payment. Yeah, $55 monthly reoccurring payment. Yeah, and this $55 is you learning how to invest in yourself. It's so vital for us to learn how to invest in ourselves. And so I want y'all to be able to pay that so you can learn the value of investing in you. So when you're going and making that monthly payment, hey, I'm worth it. Are you worth $55? Or is your, is your growth, is your business going to another level? Is you growing in your mindset worth that? I want you to think about these kind of things. Is it worth that? A coaching session with me alone would be $250. So I want you to imagine that you're getting a thousand dollars worth of coaching, not even really a thousand dollars worth of coaching because 250 is on a discount, $500, right? But you're getting all this. You're going to get direct on a Zoom call with me. Um, I do have an assistant who will be kind of like filtering it. We may even once a month do a Q&A live, which will allow y'all to be able to ask questions, get your get your questions answered. It'll be one hour. And the way it is, no, like last time I sis tried, when people needed help, I would stay after class. I will not be staying after class. Um, if you need further help than what you get in the group, you would just book a coaching session with me. But I'm only going to allow people in my mint, in my sis, you were made for more community to get coaching sessions with me. So like the coaching sessions that people normally would get like would want to get from me, they're not going to be able to like not everybody is going to be able to book a session with me. Only people in Sis You Were Made For More will be able to book coaching session with me because they are in my community. They're in that and they're really like made that commitment to say, hey, sis, I want to take it up a notch. And so knowing that my time is already scarce as is, if I'm going to dedicate my time to something, I really want to dedicate my time to people who are true, who are truly. Um, and that's what is different about this, you know, like. I'm giving up that time, right? But I want to only give up that time for people who are really, really committed to their growth. I don't have time to spend when, with people who aren't committed. But I want to make sure that I am, you know, using my time that God has blessed me with wisely. So using my time to people who are committed to growing. So on that Zoom call, come ready, come prepared, you know, come expecting and just come like just ready to receive come ready to grow you know even even i challenge y'all if you know you're getting insists you were made for more the community group get you a journal that is literally only for that because i'm going to teach y'all about journaling i'm going to teach y'all about what i did on my globe journey we may even meditate like we're going to meditate in there because like i i believe in meditation i'm so big on meditating and stuff so y'all are gonna we're gonna meditate together god's way not no witchy witchy woo way <laughs> but we're gonna meditate together so y'all gonna get some days where you girls in pajamas okay and so because i'm just i'm showing up as me i'm showing up as as that knowing that i'm gonna add so much value to your life i've, I've been able to help so many people i've been able to help grow so many people and stuff and so i know this is just an extension of that so y'all get your 55 dollars ready get it ready y'all let me know who's joining y'all y'all i want y'all so to be ready for this who's joining who's gonna get in this it's gonna be good it's gonna be so powerful and if you can't afford it start believing god now i want you to even start believing god now i want you to still already be praying to god for that 55 dollars go ahead and start believing god now for that 55 dollars go ahead and start believing god god i thank you every month i got 55 dollars for this to invest in myself to invest in my growth because you want me to grow you called me to grow you didn't call me to stay the same this is taking it to a whole nother level. Hey Amen. We're going to a whole nother level, y'all. I'm excited about it. So, yeah. So, those are my announcements and my assistant. I'm excited about having an assistant who's getting us organized. Also, we do have a new prayer email. Um, it's prayerswithsis at gmail.com. I know y'all have seen we've been going through a lot of transition, our prayer team and stuff like that. But we're, we're, we're working. We're working. So, if you need prayer, send your prayers over to prayerswithsis at gmail.com. And also, too, if you look in my bio, you're going to see it there as well. Um, if y'all want to shop with us, we got a lot of amazing items, a lot of amazing gifts. Y'all get these gifts and get them now um, and use code welcome back to get 20% off. You know, some of the gifts that we have in our boutique that you can get is we got candles. Y'all, that calm and collected candle is a eucalyptus candle that smells amazing. 
So go and grab that. Go grab your eucalyptus candle. Love your candles. Oh, thank you so much. Y'all, go get our candles. They're so amazing. They make amazing gifts. Who doesn't love candles as a gift? Amen. Yeah. So go get the common collected. That one is a eucalyptus candle. The Lord, yes. Let me tell you, I smelled that thing and I literally said, yes, yes. I was sitting over like, yes, thank you, Jesus. It smells so good. We got the bougie candle restock. We got um, the turmeric manuka honey um, bars. Y'all know right now those are so big. I know my sister, like she loves self-care items for Christmas and stuff. So if y'all are wanting to get some gifts for people, like if you know people who love self-care items, we got self-care items, 20% um, off. We ship it and we're staying on top of that shipping so y'all can get y'all stuff by the end. Um, if you know people who just like sweaters, like even the sweater I have on today, if y'all like this sweater, which is so cute, y'all see that arm on that, go shop this sweater. I have a few of them left in my boutique at www.thesisyouneed.co. We also have, um, try to think of all the amazing things we have, y'all, because we got so much stuff. We got jeans. You know, some people love clothes for Christmas, so you can get jeans. Um, you can get blouses, prayer shawls. Our prayer shawls are only $40, plus you're going to get an extra 20% off. Um, even anointing oils. I've had people buy in bulk in their anointing oils, so they'll get like eight anointing oils, and they give them away as gifts. I had one lady buy 16 bottles of anointing oils. And so you can give even the anointing oils away as gifts as well, y'all. And so if y'all are looking for some last minute gifts to give for people for Christmas, go to www.thesisyouneed.co or just click the link in my bio. It'll take you there to shop. Go get these gifts. Y'all, I'm excited for class this weekend too. I saw Mama Cheryl say that she excited for class. It's going to be so good, Wired for Wealth. And so, y'all, I love y'all so much. I'll be back on a little bit later. And I pray y'all have a blessed day. Go shop with us. Go support what God is doing here. Sow that support. Reap that support. We have Sezzle, Afterpay. We have Klarna. Um, we also have Shop Pay and Affirm and Cash App Pay. So we got a lot of different ways you can pay it out and get that 20% off with Welcome Back. Okay? Bye, everybody. We love y'all.